Bence. Escaluda 2 is a remarkable score shooter from Cave, a studio that dedicated itself to create some of the most influential bullet hell shoot em ups of all time. First released in 2005 in Japanese arcades, then in 2010 it hit Japanese store shelves as an Xbox 360 exclusive. It is Cave's 12th shoot em up and the direct successor of 2003's Asp Galuda, which made his console debut in 2004 for the PS2. One year prior, in 2009, Cave released the port of Mushihime Sama Futari that took fans of the genre all over the world by storm. Thanks to the fact that it had no region lock, which made it pretty import friendly. An aspect that should not be underestimated cause they did the same thing with Asp Galuda 2. At least with a standard edition cause the limited edition runs only on Japanese consoles. The 2012 release platinum version of the game is by the way also region free. Like in previous cave games, controls are pretty tight and allow you to move with such an elegance to dance between bullets. As though it's not as tight like in Futari, but the dance comparison is quite accurate. Well, okay, it's more or less swimming in them, but that's not the point. The point is to dodge as good as you can and spray your way through enemy lines to reach the end. I know, not exactly innovative, but what did you expect? Quick time events? Ha ha ha. Well, there are at least a couple other tricks up your sleeve to ensure your survival. For instance, each of the three main characters can use the typical rapid fire, which isn't that powerful, but let you move fairly quickly. Holding down your rapid shot slows your movement significantly, but also ramps up your firepower and results in a destructive laser. A genre staple, the smart bomb, got turned into a guard barrier that protects you as long as there is meter. It has nowhere near the same screen clearing power as the bomb, but but it is pretty powerful nonetheless. What's pretty neat is that it activates automatically and no worries, you can still use it manually. Oh, and if you hold the barrier button, you can make use of a bullet cancelling shot. However, this drains your meter fairly quickly. Another unique special in the game is that your flying heroes have the ability to switch on the fly into Kakusei Shikai mode. This will slow down enemy bullets and makes dodging that much easier. Besides that, your gem count starts to deplete. Oh yeah, um, about gems. Yeah, while talking about Kakusei, I should mention that by destroying enemies, you earn gems and gold. Both are of course needed to score, but also to enter Shikai and Setsu Shikai. So if you're in Shikai mode, you can cancel enemy bullets by shooting enemies to gain gold. If you hold the Kakusei button, you will enter Setsu Shikai mode, in which you no longer earn gold by cancelling bullets, instead you earn more bullets. Yeah, isn't that neat? Parents become more fierce and will increase your stress level on small doses. Oh, and uh, both gems and gold will deplete while in it. If both counter reach zero, that's the point where over mode kicks in and boy, this speeds things up. Bullets turn red and can kill you much faster than you think. So you got all that? Nice. Besides the rather overwhelming fundamentals, this game is packed with a variety of modes and holds something to please each and every one out there interested in shooting things up. Arcade, like the name suggests, is your straightforward port. 360 mode is identical to arcade but with HD graphics. Novice is the same as 360 but with much easier patterns. In other words, the perfect mode for people who are just starting with bullet hell shooters. Black Label is a console exclusive and comes with a new character, a different score system that's more like the chain mechanic found in Dodonpachi, where you have to connect your kills in order to hit it big time. All the different Kakusei states are altered in terms of effects and can be used for real cool things like split enemy bullets or boost your own damage output. By the way, the soundtrack for Black Label got rearranged and is amazing. Black Label Novice should be self-explaining at this point. The second 360 exclusive is the orange mode that is reminiscent to Treasures Ikaruga. Enemy shots differ between blue and red and can be cancelled into gems. Your regular deals with blue and red vanishes by laser. After clearing any of these modes once, you will unlock Omake. 
which translates roughly to bonus or extra mode or even easy peasy. <laughs> when Eren reminds you of Ikaruga, then this could be called the Shikigami no Shiro mode. Just try to stay as close to enemy bullets to gain more shot power. Here Auto Bomb is always active and the meter at the bottom can be refilled when your gold stock hits 1000. Keep that in mind cause it's necessary to stay alive in this mode. For me personally, this is by far one of the best Danmaku shooter I've ever played. Graphics and sounds are top notch. All the different modes with their unique scoring mechanics are well worth every penny and will keep you busy for months and beyond. All I can say is, grab yourself a copy and start shooting stuff. Cause it's damn fine good fun. Hi, I'm Dennis Danmaku and a very big thank you goes out to Jim the Kid Shoryuken for giving me the opportunity to talk about my favorite genre and one of my favorite games in front of such a big audience. Thanks again, um, hope all you boys and girls had as much fun as I did. And um, yeah, with that said, uh, I would say Auf Wiedersehen! Online console gaming has come a long way since its inception. My first experience was with one of my favourite games and one of my favourite systems. Choo Choo Rocket, developed by Sonic Team for the sake of Dreamcast, is part my player game, part puzzle game, and don't really ask me why I have two copies, I just kinda do. A free game to those in Europe who manage to log into the Dream Arena and actually snag a copy, it's a great example of a simple game that's incredibly fun to play. Whether you're playing singly or in multiplayer, the aim is generally the same. Get the mice into your coloured rocket and make sure to keep the cats away. You place arrows on the map that guide the mice in the direction you want them to go. When a choo-choo hits a wall, they always turn right, so you can use that to your advantage. Control-wise, you just use the analog stick to move around and then the face buttons to actually place down the arrows. This might be a little bit harder to do. In multiplayer games, the action is fast and frantic, with players trying to escort choo-choos towards their rocket, while simultaneously steering cats towards their opponents. There are also special choo-choos, one that grants 50 upon capturing it, and another that spins a reel with effects like Mouse Mania and Cat Mania, slow down and even swapping positions. The game can quickly go from you dominating to everyone ganging up on you and the tables being flipped. The same can be said though when it happens to one of the computers or a fellow player, so it is even. If you don't want to deal with the pace of multiplayer, then there is also 100 puzzle levels to tackle, as well as downloadable ones. These start off easy enough, but later puzzles definitely ramp up the difficulty. You can even create your own, and we're able to upload them, allowing for a greater amount of replayability. Graphically, the bright colours, cute characters and simple design might turn away a few people, but to me, it actually adds to the charm. The music is catchy, though there isn't that many different tracks. The voice clips, while funny at first, can get a little bit grating though when there's multiple effects happening on a match. The online was great when it was up back in the day. It played as well as the offline, save for the occasional lag spike, and it was hilarious to go on with three players on the same console versus one lonely player online and harass them. Since its release, Sega's ported and updated the game a few times, with the newest version coming to Apple Arcade for some reason rather than absolutely any other platform. It's a great game to still pick up and play, either by yourself or with friends. Whether you owned it back in the day, or whether you're looking to pick it up now, it's still relatively cheap, so it should be a game that everyone has in their Dreamcast collection. Anyways, I've been Tom from Victor Pros Gaming, thank you for watching and thanks to Jim from Kidshiryuken for giving me the opportunity to get this game out there. I cover quite a few things ranging from games in my collection that I built up over the years to even stuff like Gumpler. I sometimes stream speedrunning as well, ranging from games like Resident Evil 2 and Mega Man's to even things like Dark Souls with mods. So if any of that sounds interesting to you then please head over to my channel, check out all the usual social links that need to be said, they'll be somewhere, you can just check one of them. And once again, thank you to Jim from Kidshuriken for giving us this opportunity. If I could buy you a beer, I would, but I don't think I'm allowed to post one at the moment to you. So that's it for me. Thanks for watching, and have a great gaming day. Hi folks, my name's Ed, I'm from a newer YouTube channel called Half Circle Forward, and I'm super excited to be here with you today. 
A big thanks to Kid Show Ryuken for inviting me along, and today we're going to be taking a look at one of Capcom's lesser known titles, one I had an absolute blast with, and one of my favourite racing games of all time. That game is Auto Modelista on the GameCube. Capcom. Hot on the heels of Capcom vs SNK Pro, Capcom's production studio One stepped out of its comfort zone to produce a racing game, Auto Modelista. After an initially lackluster Japanese release on the PlayStation 2, the game received an overhaul and ports to the Xbox and GameCube, as well as a Japanese re-release as Auto Modelista US Tuned. Auto Modelista is Capcom's unique take on the insanely popular arcade racing genre with highly stylized cell shaded graphics and over-the-top soundtrack, clearly drawing heavy inspiration from Initial D. Auto Modelista's presentation instantly impresses. Little details such as speed lines, plumes of smoke when braking, or flashes when you crash draw you in and make you feel as if you're actually playing an anime. Paired with the over-eager announcer, Capcom's design choices make a bold statement and give the game a truly Capcom feel. So the presentation is clearly on point and Capcom went to great lengths to make sure that Auto Modelista had the content to back up its unique style. With a roster of just under 70 cars from some of the world's largest auto manufacturers, nine real-world tracks and two game modes, Auto Modelista offers plenty to keep you occupied. Auto Modelista's arcade mode's pretty much what you'd expect, with versus AI and two-player split-screen races. But it's the career mode, Garage Life, that's the meat and bones of the game, offering deep yet surprisingly accessible tuning options, aesthetic customization, and even a garage editor. Are you ready? Okay, here we go. Races are set up in levels, each offering a variety of racing styles. Street, track and downhill races keep the game fresh and interesting and offer a wide appeal. Win each series of races and progress to the next level, unlocking rewards as you go. The largest point of contention when Auto Modelista first released was the game's handling. If I have one criticism of the game, it's that starting out the cars seem floaty and unpredictable, which will likely turn some people off. But if you're willing to put in some time and delve into the tuning options, any of the cars can be set up to handle beautifully. Overall, Capcom delivers a well-presented and unique racing experience, offering deep tuning options and robust career mode that I absolutely adore. If you're into the Need for Speed, Ridge Racer or Initial D series, or if you're looking for a fresh take on arcade style racing, I can't recommend this game highly enough. Thanks once again to Kid Show Ryukin for having me over, I really appreciate it. I hope you've enjoyed watching the video as much as I've enjoyed making it, and if you have, I'd love it if you'd swing by the channel and say hi. It is early days, but there's a whole lot in the works. Challenger! Radical Reggie here, and today's import game of the week is Panzer Bandit for the PlayStation 1 system. This is a beat em up game developed by Feelin' Cafe that are better known for the Oscar 120% series and also the Mad Stalker series. But right now, we're gonna look into this beat em up gem that I think you guys will really enjoy. Let's listen to a little intro music, shall we?
Now, a little history behind this game, uh, for me at least, I found out about it because I was looking for a game that was similar to the beat 'em up Guardian Heroes on the Sega Saturn, and this game fits that to a T. Like, if you're looking for the Guardian Heroes experience on the PlayStation, this is it. Now, you can pick between four characters. Um, the only one I remember his name was Ko, the main character. Another character here, Mew, I think that was her name. I keep forgetting. But uh, she rides her mech, and her mech is pretty funny because it actually, she, she has trouble controlling it and actually explodes sometimes. And then you'll see her, like, fighting by herself until the, the mech comes back or she kind of summons it back or there's, like, a timer that makes it come back. It's pretty hilarious, but she's one of the cool, unique characters in this game. So being that this is a beat-em-up, I want to go over a couple bases with you guys. Um... Um, unfortunately, this is a single player beat em up. You know, you can't get help during the story mode. I thought you could have co op, but you can't. But that's okay. You have your helper partner, which has a lot of different moves they can help, like bring to the battle, which is really nice projectiles, uh, super attacks, uh, lots of different things. So it keeps things really interesting. Also, you could jump into the background and back into the foreground, which is really nice. You know, helps, you know, keep things slow. Well, you could try to keep track of things because things get really crazy in this game, which is really nice. Uh, and when I say crazy, I mean crazy in a good way because there's a lot of animation going on in the screen. And that's another thing I want to bring up. Uh, they did a good job porting it to the PlayStation because 2D games are somewhat hard to do on the PlayStation less done properly. And what they did, I believe they sacrificed is where the enemies look the same. But there's different variations of them, so that would that would kind of help with the smoother animations. I would think are having a lot of things on the screen going on. Also, the game starts out pretty open. I would say you could choose between four levels you want to start with, and then as you go on in the game, as you get past those levels, uh, the game gets kind of linear. I would say, but I want you guys to check out this boss battle right here and listen to the music. It's really good. One thing I really like about a beat-em-up game is good boss battles, and this game definitely delivers on that end. Um, this boss that I'm fighting right here is probably one of my favorite bosses in the game. Um, very tough. I mean, I mean, especially for me getting back into this game, it just like puts up a great challenge. It just really felt really like fun. So all in all. This is a game I could definitely recommend that people try out. I mean, it's a lot of fun. I mean, there's not really any negatives I have about it besides what I talked about earlier, that there's no uh, two-player mode or co-op mode, I would say, in the story. So that was a bummer. But either way, if you're looking for a single-player beat-em-up, this game is definitely it if you can find it for a good price. If not, uh, bust out them emulators. That's what they're there for. Remember, the developers wanted you to be able to play these games, even if they're not making money off them anymore. So... Just look at it like that. But anyways, guys, um, shout out to Kitsch Rukum for letting me do this video on his channel. I really appreciate it. Um, and I would like to leave it off to this uh, person. If Jimmy Hoppa wants to step in and make a video, that would be greatly appreciated for the Kitsch Rukum's channel. So if Jimmy Hoppa, if you're watching, man, you get out of retirement and make us a quick video on the channel. Anyways, guys, that's all I got for you. Radical Reggie, and I will see you later. Hi folks, I'm Joe, and I host a show here on YouTube called Same Name Different Game, where I typically talk about different ports or versions of a video game. And I just want to thank Jim for putting me on his guest host roster for Show Review Ken. So let's talk about a Genesis shoot'em up. This could just as easily be one of Jim's import games of the day, since Glaylancer, or perhaps more appropriately, Advanced Busterhawk Glaylancer, was relegated to Japan-only status. This is truly a bummer, because while the Genesis has a stacked roster of shoot-'em-ups, this is one of the best. Rivaled perhaps only by the best of Technosoft and Compile on the platform, Advanced Busterhawk Glaylancer is the product of developer and publisher Masaya, the same folks behind Cybernator on the Super NES, 
as well as the very weird Cho Aniki series of shooters and the Langrisser series of strategy games. This game sees the player step into the shoes of Lucia Cabrock, a pilot out to save her father, an admiral who apparently disappeared into some kind of space warp because evil aliens or whatever. I mean, it's a shoot 'em up. How much story do you really expect? Still, it is pretty cool to see a lady piloting the ship in a game from this era. Ultimately though, a shooter relies on the gameplay. So how does the game play? It's honestly everything you want from a horizontal shooter. Cool and varied power-ups, interesting levels, fun boss encounters, and an awesome, unique ship design. The advanced Buster Hawk Glaylancer is apparently a prototype ship that Lucia steals to save her father, and it's the most radical ship in the fleet because of course it is. It's able to hold two gun pods at a time using a special weapon. In practice, this means each special weapon pickup, at least for the first two on each life, is both a pod and a power-up, meaning you don't have to pick up the pods separately, as in many shooters like Konami's Salamander. There are a total of seven different types of gun pods, from the twin shot, which is basically the same as the ship's gun, to the saber, which is, yeah, a giant lightsaber, to my personal favorite, the burner, a giant flamethrower. But while the varied armaments are cool, it isn't where the game truly becomes unique. Upon starting a game, you get to choose the behavior of your pods, with seven choices. For beginners, I recommend the search option, which causes the pods to aim automatically. But for me, normal is ultimately best, allowing you to aim the pods with the D-pad and hold the C button to lock them in place. But other settings like the shadow which emulates the options from Gradius, are cool too, and worth playing with depending on your preference of weapon and playstyle. Glaylancer has some gorgeous environments, though the first stage's asteroid field does make it a little hard to see enemy projectiles. It's also got some great music. It's not Streets of Rage or anything, but it's the kind of shoot 'em up music that gets you pumped at the right times and sets a proper atmosphere at others. Now unfortunately, this game carries a high cost these days, so you may have to do what I did and load it up on your favorite flash cart. But rest assured, if you're a shoot 'em up fan and haven't played this one, you'll dig it. 